Morning, church. We just want to continue on with the distinctions that, uh, of Christ that have become our distinctions also in Christ. Amen? Uh, C.S. Lewis said uh, that Jesus became uh, the Son of Man so that we could become the sons of God. And so this is a wonderful exchange of, of in life that Jesus took away all of our sins. He became sin for us, the Bible teaches us, that so that we could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That once and for all, he died for all of mankind. He died for the whole world. He died for every single person on this planet, past, present, and future. He died for everyone, once and for all, so that all could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But you have to actually make that choice. He won't violate that free will of yours. He, he, he wants you to make that choice. But one of the distinctions of Jesus, uh, well, a couple of them, is, is first of all, that he was, he was righteous before God. He was conceived of of the Holy Spirit, number one. And so that made him holy from birth. Made him right with God from birth. Secondly, um, he was also uh, uh, anointed of the Holy Spirit uh, with, with power in the Holy Spirit. And the other third thing is really that he was a man who learned how to obey a God, the Father, from the will of, in God's will for his life. That he, he said, not my will, but your will be done in my life. And so because of that obedience, there was, a, a, um, a God was able to exalt him and uh, do what God needed to do through his only begotten son. Um, so the interesting thing is, is those kind of three distinctions, but the main two are the, the first two that really gives us this uh, understanding that Jesus came and he did those. He was like that as a man on earth. Um, and he did everything that he did as a man under those two uh, distinctions in his life. That's what made him uh, able to actually achieve what he was able to achieve. Um, and so uh, through salvation, through being born again of the Spirit of God, that we are able to actually inherit and have those same two distinctions. Uh, and that is that we are, first of all, made right with God. I talked about in the last session that we're made right with God. Um, the Holy Spirit can't live in somebody who's not right with God because he's holy. Just makes common sense. It's just, you know, normal, easy way of thinking that through. And so... Um, you and I are saints. It doesn't mean that we don't do the wrong things sometimes and we think the wrong things and, um, and, and we do need to confess those things and, and come before God and repent from those things. In fact, the, the word repent just means to, to be renewed in your mind, just change the way you think about things. So I, I said in the last session that I live not uh, 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 sin conscious, but I live righteous conscious. Um, in my life now. I used, to, I used to live most of my life, most of my Christianity, sin conscious. I used to come to God all the time. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Oh, Lord, I'm so, oh, I'm so, so, so sorry. Oh I, oh, I didn't want to think that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> and so because I lived that way, I was always basically overwhelmed by sin. It's like sin kept its hold on me. And in fact, Paul writes in, in Romans um, how he says in Romans chapter 7, he says, the things that I want to do, I can't do because there's another thing working in me, the law of sin and death. It's constantly working in my life. But he says, you know, he, um, he has to get to actually chapter 8 to actually refute that, not re kind of refute it, but um, just explain that whole thought. And that is that, that he's actually already, uh, there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. Because we've been made justified. We've been uh, atoned for. We've been reconciled. We've been made righteous. Imputed righteousness has been given to us. Um, I guarantee you that, that when you begin to live 
from that understanding of, of being right with God, it helps you in your walk with God. It helps you in your praying with God and talking with God. It helps you in your everyday life of just standing in faith and, and in wholeness and in strength uh, when you just know that you're right with God. Even if you have messed up a couple of times or you mess up from time to time. You know, um, uh, you don't stop being a son just because you do the wrong thing sometimes. Um, now, that might not fit in with some people's theology. And I'm not saying that you can't completely go away from God and reject God completely. But I think it's very hard to do that. Uh, I think he, uh, once you ask Christ in your life, it's really hard to, to get away from him. <laughs> uh, um, but it doesn't mean that we, don't, we live in sin and that we can live in sin and continue to do the wrong thing. It, it does mean that we do need to repent from time to time of things that we're doing. But I say this, is that we are, it's, it's not a habit, it, it, we've been living in a, a habit of sin. So we've been practicing our sin, sin nature for so long that when we do get saved, this has to change. And we have to then begin to learn to live uh, um, practicing our righteous man. And, and that's the process. It's not that you're now raw, you're out of, out of sync with God. You're still right with God. You're still holy. You're still right with Him. Um, you're still His son, His daughter. Um, but what it does mean is that you've got to learn to stop practicing and, and put off the old man. And learn to put on the new man that is in Christ Jesus. Learn to practice walking in your new man in Christ. And so when you begin to do that, that's a distinction of Jesus. Uh, Jesus never had that problem, by the way. <laughs> I think he kind of lived most of his life not practicing sin, sinful things. I think he learned how to not sin at all. Because <laughs> uh, he already started off from childhood that way, you know. So, anyhow, that's just another thought. The truth is this. It was also, the other thing is, is that he was anointed of the Holy Spirit and power. Um, I, I believe that if you and I could actually just be anointed and, and be filled with the Spirit of God, let that be something that we do on a regular basis, being filled and refilled and anointed um, getting along with God, letting His presence begin to uh, fill up in our soul and in our spirit man again and again and again. And let faith grow, let um, the anointing grow upon our lives. You can see in, in the, even in the book of Acts that the guys, the apostles, the disciples, all of those people in the New Testament, when they were anointed of, in, in, with, with power of the Holy Spirit and faith, you could see these guys were doing miracles. They were seeing miracles take place in their life. Because first of all, they were righteous with God. They were already right with God, number one. Number two, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and power. And because of that, they could do the same things that Jesus had done in his earthly uh, ministry. And that's why Jesus came. He came to show us by example a man who is right with God and anointed by the Holy Spirit, what they can actually achieve and what they can do to bring to being uh, people who can reconcile mankind back to God. And that's what the Bible says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, is that God has, has reconciled the whole world to himself through Christ Jesus and that he's then given to you and me the ministry of reconciliation. That's our job. Our job is to go and do the same thing that Jesus came to do. That's why it says here in verse uh, 20 of chapter 5, it says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are God's representatives here on earth doing the same things that Jesus did as Christ. 
did. As though God were pleading through us. God working in us and pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So our job is to do the same thing. Um, now that we've been made right with God and uh, filled in, and anointed of the Holy Spirit in, in Him. Um, being baptized in the Holy Spirit is an interesting thing because uh, I was baptized um, when I was probably about, I'd say probably about eight, maybe nine years of age. I was in a meeting with my father in Albany, Western Australia. My dad was preaching just a, re, a kind of a small little revival meeting down there for a, a friend of mine, a, a guy we know. His name is Richard Roy, a great, great minister, great guy. He is still, I think he's still here in Perth and still lives here somewhere in Perth and ministers and he's a great Bible teacher. Um, I remember in this revival meeting, my dad was preaching. I think it was only two or three nights uh, that dad was speaking. And we were in the, the ambulance hall in Albany, Western Australia. And um, I don't know, I can't even remember what my dad was preaching about. Uh, he must have been preaching about the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues and, and all that stuff, you know. Um, and I, I remember going down the front um, and I got probably from about here to about where the chairs are, which is about two, maybe uh, two and a half meters from where I'm standing, where the camera is. And um, I, I remember walking down the aisle and, and nobody touched me. Nobody came near me. And I fell backwards under the power of God. And I fell backwards and I, I, f I actually fell on the ground and I was gone. I was completely not here. I was speaking in tongues and I was on the floor and I was in, I was in another place. Um, it was one of these incredible spiritual experiences that as a nine or eight year old kid um, probably didn't fully grasp at the time. I knew it was good. And it felt good. And it was quite an incredible thing. And, um, and I just remember just being so overwhelmed by the Spirit of God and, and, and Him touching my life. And, and they left me there. They just left me. They, they kind of have, went off and had tea and coffee and, and just left me there. Uh, lying there speaking in tongues. Just... just uh, and I stopped speaking in tongues there at one point in time. But I, I, didn't, I, I didn't even kind of, nobody taught me that. I'd heard it in church. I'd heard people speaking in tongues. And I, I, but, but I didn't know that that's, you know, uh, you know just eight, nine-year-old kid. You don't, you don't get all those things. Not like I do now. <laughs> but, man, I just remember that experience like it was yesterday. And, and there's been several times over the years where God has come and met with me again and anointed me afresh um, and, and empowered me by the Holy Spirit. Doesn't mean that I always spoke in tongues because there were times that I didn't always speak in tongues. But, but I was just empowered by the Holy Spirit. So I want to encourage you that if you're driving in your car this morning or if you're at home listening to this or wherever you are I want you when you finish listening to this go to your bedroom or, or just in your car just turn the radio or turn, turn me off and, and uh, don't turn the radio on and just begin to pray in the Holy Spirit just begin to pray in tongues and just begin to worship God and, and just ask Him to fill you afresh of the Holy Spirit and power and that you could experience this fresh new encounter of his presence. Because I believe that God wants to use us as reconcilers to the rest of the world. And I believe that God wants to use you and me to see miracles happen 
and lives transformed and people healed and delivered and set free by the power of God. Amen. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would pour out your Holy Spirit Right now, upon every person who is listening to this, right now, the Spirit of God would just begin to fill every single person in this place, in, that, in, in their place right now, with your Spirit and with your power and anointing, a fresh anointing of your grace and of your goodness. Amen and amen.